Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, I'm back with another episode in my travel series. This episode of the series is about tips for traveling or being away from home while natural. A lot of the points are relevant more to long trips, but I think a lot of them are relevant to all trips. So I know your trips can be short or long, so you can decide like which ones are more relevant based on whether you're having a short trip or a long trip, but I think overall they're pretty helpful. The first thing for traveling while natural, make a list, check it twice. Make a hair list. So you have your regular list if you do that. I just kind of go in my closet and throw things in like hours before I fly. But my hair stuff, I pack that early because girl, you know, I don't need to be, you know, like it's such a disaster if you forget something important. So make sure you have your own hair list and keep that list open for at least a couple wash days so that during the wash day you'll kind of think of things that you might need and pack it. Like keep it open for at least a couple, a week or two so that you have time to remember everything. So once you come up with your really good list, you can kind of reuse that list in future packing, but for that first list, take your time and age it like sweet wine. You know, just keep it open for a week or two and just keep thinking about it. And hang it up and in your mind you want to pack, you write it down on your list. And then you can double check your list after to make sure you have everything there. The second tip is to know what your must-haves are. I know you cannot pack everything you want to pack, you know. You don't want to be overweight when checking your luggage because... You packed, especially you pack your prices stuff, I don't know, but you don't want to have to throw your products because you're overweight and you don't want to have to pay $25 or whatever either for like having overweight luggage. So, I mean, next to your traveler, you know you wear your stuff, but just don't pack too much stuff. Don't pack too much stuff. No, you don't need a this or that or that or that. Don't go crazy. Pack your wash day essentials. When I say essentials, I mean like your clips, your plastic caps, your detangling tools. I pack gloves in the applicator bottle, just whatever your wash day essentials are. And this is for longer trips especially where you expect to have a wash day, but even shorter trips you just never know what will happen. And those things are not heavy, so those things you can always pack with you. So if you're going on a longer trip, pack your hair shares in case you have some knot or something that you need to deal with. And of course if you're packing your hair shares, you're checking it in, you're not putting it in a carry-on, don't say Trini Girl Natural told you to walk with scissors on a plane, please. <laughs> if you have like, if you use a special towel, like a snack free towel for wash day or for the gym, you want to make sure you pack that as well. My other tip is don't pack anything that you would cry if you lost. This is not a time to be packing your Bakura stuff or whatever, like whatever pricey stuff that you buy. Because you know you never know what happened. You just never know. Things can go missing, things can spill, you know. So this is time to pack your drugstore stuff, your Target stuff, your Walmart stuff, your easily available stuff. I mean you would still probably be really sad and your hair probably might be as moisturized as it could be if some of that stuff spills, but at least it won't be like it won't hit you, you know what I mean? <laughs> at least it won't hit your hair, you know what I mean? I usually pack my share moisture coconut and I discuss um, style milk and conditioner because they're cheap enough, they're easily available, a little goes a long way, no glycerin and stuff like that. Pack things that can double as more than one thing. So if you have a leave-in that can be a cream or um, a moisturizer, or you have a cream that can be a leave-in or you have a conditioner that can be a leave-in or a leave-in that can be a styler, like you know, if you can just pack one thing and it can work for everything, then that's great. I usually pack two things just because I go for like a whole month sometimes and I'm going to probably use both, use all of both anyway. But if you're just going for a week or something, you know, try to get by. I mean, I know you probably want to have a leave-in. I know you probably want to have a styler. And I know you probably want to have a little shampoo. The shampoo, I would just put it in a travel size container because you don't need to go with your whole heavy thing of shampoo. So a cleanser, a leave-in, and a styler. You know, I think that can mostly work for everyone. If you have high porosity and you need the emergency protein, you can pack whatever protein stuff that you need as well. I didn't say conditioner because I usually gamble and buy conditioner when I get there. There are very few places that you go where you can't find a bottle of conditioner. And since I use so much conditioner, you know, I can't really pack all the conditioner I need anyway, so I'm going to probably have to end up buying what we're making. So I just usually don't pack conditioner and I just depend on getting it there. So it depends on where I go. If I know I'm going to a resort and I may not even get to a store um, and I'm checking in luggage, I might pack one conditioner, you know. Usually if I'm going to a resort, it's only like a week or something anyway. So I might pack like 
um, you know, a relatively cheap conditioner, maybe like a bottle of like Tresemme perfectly undone or something like that. Um, just so I have a conditioner. Another uh, stuff that you want to pack, you want to pack your spray bottle because that's an essential which natural is without a spray bottle, I don't know, you know. So you don't have to pack it full of stuff, just pack an empty spray bottle. If you can get to a grocery, when you go to the grocery, you buy your conditioner, you buy your oil and you can just like put water and put a little bit of both in that and there you got, you got your misting spray. So everything that you pack, you want it to be effective, you want it to preferably not cause buildup, um, especially like, you know, the moisturizers and stuff like that. Because you might be busy while you're there, you know, you might, your hair might be exposed to the elements and your hair might get dry. You want to be able to just run some moisturizer on it without having to wash it and without worrying about buildup. So, like I love the Camille Rose um, Moisture Butter, that travels really well. The Curl Aid is really light and it's really moisturizing. And I can put, easily put it on dry hair, so that travels really well. As well as, like I mentioned, the Coconut and Hibiscus Style Milk. So, Camille Rose is another thing that I travel with just because it works so well. And it goes a long way. So, like, you know, the Twisted Almond Butter might be good if you have to do twists. And the Curl Aid is also good just for, as a moisturizer. So this is a packing tip, but it's very important because when you get there, if you all your products are gone, then this whole video was kind of nothing almost. So make sure you use lots of plastic bags when you're packing your products. Like individually, I usually put each one in its own plastic bag and make sure I screw it tight. I make sure I reseal any sprays or like twist lock any conditioners that I can and stuff like that. And I still individually put each in a plastic bag and then put all the plastic bags into one bigger plastic bag. Because I swear that there's some little otherworldly force on the plane that unscrews everything. Things that you swore was close properly, is closed on yourself. Somehow you get, when you get there, they're open and spilled. I don't know if it's like a pressure difference, temperature difference or what. But I've had it happen even to me. At least if it's in its own plastic bag, you can be... Frugal and scrape that stuff out of that plastic bag and put it on your hair. You know what I mean? So that's why I kind of put everything in its own separate plastic bag and you know seal everything to the best of my ability. If you're going for a long time, the grocery can definitely be your friend. You know, in addition to finding a cheap conditioner, you can probably get some olive oil. These days it's pretty easy to even find flax seeds. So I mean, you know, if you're brave, you really don't even need to pack anything because that's a regimen right there, you know, maybe just a little shampoo and then get there and you can make your own little leave-ins and make your own styler with just conditioner, oil and flaxseed gel, like I could anyways, you know. So the grocery is your friend and kind of think outside the box. I know some people are like, oh I have to carry everything because they, they aren't used to DIYing, but maybe look up some DIY stuff before you go. So you can probably DIY a deep conditioner if you're going to be there for months. And you don't want to pack like jars and jars of deep conditioner to weigh down your suitcase. Find some honey, the olive oil, banana, like, you know, pumpkin, like whatever you find in the grocery that's moisturizing. You can use it on your hair as a mask, you know. So, grocery and DIY is your friend, especially for long trips. Please don't forget your scarf and your bonnet. In fact, carry two scarves or two bonnets because you never want to be without those. Because typically, people aren't going to have satin pillowcases just waiting for their natural hair guests, you know what I mean? So, you definitely want to have stuff to protect your hair. And since a lot of times you, things get lost somehow, I would say have at least two of each of those. Like, I mean, if you're a bonnet person, two bonnets. If you're a scarf person, two scarves. And also, don't forget your detangling tools if you do detangle with tools, especially if you use like a fancy thing, I know people have their wee dad and their deva curl, like I have a Hercules segment comb. You never know, you can have some kind of detangling emergency and you're gonna cry if you have to use some cheap comb that's just scratching out your hair with each stroke. So even if you don't use tools, I would still carry some kind of emergency detangling tool, whether it's a Denman brush or um, a white tooth comb. And if you do use tools, then definitely carry it because you definitely want to have it. And this is just in case. Like, I guess I plan for emergencies. So you'll be like, oh, that's going to happen. And then somehow, you know, somebody spills soup in your hair or something. You never know and you have to wash it. So I'm always prepared for some kind of emergency wash day to happen. So definitely I always pack my wash day stuff. And I'm not heavy either. So I pack whatever wash day stuff I can. In terms of styling while there or in terms of hair management while there, in general there are two options one 
is to try to delay your wash day until you get back and two is to wash often enough there so that you're not spending hours having wash day while you're abroad you know I'm mostly I guess thinking about vacation but while you're abroad you want to have fun you don't want to spend all day washing your hair while everybody else is at the beach or something like that so if you know you're going to be there for months I guess you know wash often enough that you don't need to spend all day washing when you do wash if you're going to be there only for a week or two maybe try to hold off until you get back if you are washing frequently you want to aim for fast drying styles you don't want to have wet hair all the time so you want to maybe use lighter products or use fewer products or you know whatever it takes so that your hair dries faster so especially people like low cross people like myself if your hair is taking like over a day to dry and you're wetting it every day it's just not gonna work you know so aim for fast drying styles aim for moisture retaining styles like a bun or something like that where it's just low manipulation, retains moisture well, or like twists or something like that, twists in a bun, you know? Aim for styles like that, because you don't have to be combing your hair every day, you don't want dry hair, you don't want tangles. So if you're not going to be washing your hair every day or you don't plan to, then I would suggest definitely to have a shower cap or a swim cap. So I know it's not the cutest thing in the world, but using a swim cap saves me so much drama when I'm on vacation. Um, I can be cutesy and like, oh, I don't want to wet my hair, but I like to swim, so um, I just use a swim cap so when I get out, my hair is still relatively dry, and I don't have to like deal with detangling, deal with wet hair, deal with products, deal with this and that, deal with your hair being a mess and all that. So when I'm in the water, when I'm traveling, usually I go to the Caribbean or somewhere nice. Well, not usually, but a lot of times I end up in the Caribbean or somewhere nice, so, you know, I go with a swim cap. Put my swim cap on, swim at the beach, take off my swim cap, and I'm good to go, you know. Maybe mix it with some water, wet my um, hands, and just fluff my hair, and I'm good to go. May have not looked the cutest in the water, but I can walk out and be done, though. Don't have to work out and have to deal with, like, you know, hair. And that helps to preserve your style, too, if you're only going for, like, a week or two, and you swim cap and shower cap as needed. I mean, you, you know, you know your stuff, like... I shower with all the plastic cap just to get moisture into my hair, but I don't like totally soak my hair. So if I'm going into the pool or beach, I would use a swim cap. Using a swim cap helps my hair to last longer. And while we're on that topic, you should definitely know your beach and pool like damage prevention tips. So, you know, I guess that might be a whole other video. But basically, if you are using the swim cap, make sure it's nice and tight. If you're not using a swim cap, make sure you saturate your hair with fresh water first and, you know, add some oil or conditioner or whatever to kind of keep the salt or the chlorine out of your hair. If you're going to the pool and you're doing the chlorine thing, you definitely should co-wash or wash um, regularly. I guess even the salt, if you're in the beach, you probably need to co-wash and wash regularly. So, if you want to be that girl, you know, tossing her wet hair, then, you know, be prepared to co-wash or wash regularly. I'm not about that drama, so I put my swim cap on and I go on about my life. So hair accessories are also really important to have while traveling and to plan while traveling. So ponytail holders, headbands for puffs, bobby pins, um, things like that. Like, you know, possible hats and scarves and wraps and beanies and things like that can really make a difference to you. So if you have stuff like that, you can kind of have an easier time. You can just kind of like, you know, pin it back, throw it in a ponytail, whatever. And you can spend more time having fun and less time dealing with open hair that's, you know, taking on a life of its own. Because trust and believe when you're in a different environment, your hair starts to act differently and you probably wouldn't know what's hitting you. So definitely have some hair accessories so that you can kind of put it up, put it away, put it back, pin it back as needed. Another thing to check beforehand is like the weather and the water situation. So I know, you know, first world problems or non-problems, we are used to just sitting on the tap and having water. But you might go somewhere where there might be a water shortage or there might be hard water and you need to plan accordingly. So make sure you check that before you go. In terms of a water shortage, you know, you might have to maybe even do a protective style or um, try to do twists and finger comb your hair to detangle and you know, figure out how to use the least amount of water. Even similarly for like hard water, other people use like distilled water in the store, but you know, there's only so much distilled water from the store you can buy, so you still have to kind of ration. So make sure you check that beforehand so you're not just wandering in, planning to wash and go every day, and you know, there isn't water where you're going. So, and then on a similar note, you should also check the weather. So I tend to recommend glycerin free because it's kind of weather independent. 
but if it's very humid and you're using glycerin your hair might just frizz out and my hair goes from frizzy to dry like it can be frizzy but it can't be like completely frizzed out because it's gonna get dry so if i'm going somewhere really hot i avoid glycerin if I'm going to be really cool, I also avoid glycerin. I guess glycerin free is just the easiest deal for me, but if you do like glycerin but it affects your hair, check the weather before you go. And if the weather where you're going is hot, understand that you might not really comprehend how hot that hot is until you get there. If, for example, if you plan to use beanies as a hair accessory and you go out and it's so hot you have to snatch it off and look crazy, for example, <laughs> you know, yes, that happened to me once. If you're going somewhere hot, plan to keep yourself cool. You know, plan to maybe keep your hair back from your face and stuff like that. If you're going somewhere cool, you know, plan to protect your hair as well. So, whether you might need like, you know, a slap or something like that, the satin line caps, something like that to protect your hair. So, definitely check the weather and react accordingly for your hair based on the weather. So, figure out your fastest wash day. So, if you are going to wash, figure out your fastest wash day because now isn't the time when you're out there to spend like four hours washing your hair and you might need to practice it beforehand like if you have to do a low water wash day practice that if you have to do a fast wash day practice that you know maybe you need to stretch your hair beforehand or pre poo beforehand or maybe you have to wash more often so you spend less time per wash figure out a faster wash day if your wash day is usually a long routine so know how you're going to wash your hair when you, when you get there and for the whole trip know how you're going to wash your hair especially in this case where you're traveling and you have a limited amount of product Make sure you budget your products well. Make sure, I mean, it's like food in the apocalypse, you know. You have this much leave-in, you have this much conditioner, and if you go ham the first week, you're going to be out of luck for the rest. So, make sure you budget and you know, okay, I have this many days, and budget for emergencies too. Okay, I can only use this much per day or whatever, you know. And carry enough that you don't have to really struggle. So, carry or buy enough that you don't have to really struggle. But I'm still saying, just keep an eye on it. And for your really nice products, you might want to save that for your special time. So, you know, your fancy dinners, parties, whatever, where you want to look really nice. Budget product, like your best set of products for those occasions. And the rest of the time, you can, you know, relax, do your bun, do whatever. You can kind of let it go a little bit more. You're not going to see most of these people again, I guess. So, you don't have to look perfect every time. It does save you product and save you packing if you budget your product a little bit more while you're out there and while budgeting if you don't want to look busted when you're coming back make sure you budget some for the return as well if you don't care how you look in the airport then forget that you know so i don't generally care but i want to at least have some leave and some styler left for the airport because if my hair looks i don't want it to be dry and you know whatever to add to my travel stress because Dry, frazzled hair is just even more unpredictable than put together hair, so I like to return, I like my airport travel day to be kind of put together. Another tip is that you can let your hair go, but not too much. So, basically, you know, you can let it be frizzy a little bit, maybe even a little, little dry. You know, you don't want to be like fussing over it too much, you want to enjoy your trip, but at the same time, don't invite trouble. So, travel wind. It's the same as your wind at home. If you're not going to be letting your hair just blow all over at home because it's going to cause tangles, then don't expect, oh, the pictures are so cute though, to have your hair blowing all over while you're on vacation and not get tangles, you know? So don't be too bright. Don't look for trouble. Um, but it doesn't need to be perfect and laid every second either. Just kind of relax and enjoy it. If you want to delay it until you get back home to wash, the main thing to note on the kind of guidelines is that it's fine to have a slightly longer wash day. But it's not fine to have a complete setback like breakage and matting and stuff like that. So you want to walk the line, you know, of maybe making things a little harder when you get home, but not too hard. So you can let your hair go a little bit, but not too much. Yeah. So that was it. Um, I usually travel a couple times a year and I'm, I'm traveling soon. So I wanted to come on and just give you these tips. Definitely hope they were helpful. This, these are stuff I learned from experience. So... Definitely hope they were helpful and um, look out for more in my travel series. Thanks for watching. Bye.